Hey guys and welcome to Game Jammin. Today's video is all about a new game called Throne of Lies. It is a game of hidden roles and social deduction. The object of the game is to figure out who your allies are at the table and get rid of all the opposition, including possible neutral characters. So this is similar to Mafia or Town of Salem, but on a much more complicated level. The game revolves around a day-night cycle. During the day, you can freely talk to any of the members at the table. However, at night, you are either by yourself or in small groups, depending on your role. So, hopefully I got you interested in the game. It's lots and lots of fun to play, and it's lots of fun to try to figure out how uh, the other players are performing. So, if you're interested, let's go through uh, the different screens and see how they work. All right, so here's the menu screen that you get right after you log in. And honestly, the only button you're gonna need is that top left one that says find game, and then hit start solo to start up a game. And you just wait for uh, 16 people to join into a match. Uh, but on top of that, you should also pay attention. There is a button up there for the Wikia and for the classes and the guide. And those are great tools you can use to get yourself acquainted with some of the characters and to get acquainted with some of the rules that you'll see in the game. Uh, but honestly, uh, half of this is just going to be getting into game and playing it yourself. So don't focus too much on trying to learn all the rules. Just get yourself familiar with some of the terms so that when people say somebody is immune, you have some understanding of where you can go look up that information. Okay, guess what you have to do on the screen? Yeah, you, you need to put in a name if you want. You don't have to put in a name, it'll automatically assign you a name. Uh, what's important here is to take a look at there's a timer. Everything in this game revolves around timers, so just pay attention to the timers at the top to know when you need to take an action and buy. So on day one, what should you do? Honestly, you probably shouldn't be doing anything at all. The only thing you should pay attention to is the bottom and see whether you have any abilities that you can use. Prince is probably the most uh, interesting one since you want to jail somebody, but other than that, you don't need to do or say anything. Just wait till the night and then Pay attention to your class card. This is the key to the game and key to understanding how the rules work. So let's go over this class card real quick. Uh, you'll notice that there is passives, day abilities, and night abilities. Uh, so you wanna read through them all to understand how your class works. And then after that, you can start investigating other roles that are interesting to you based on what people are saying in chat. So let's go through the abilities. Immune to occupation, what does that mean? Uh, occupation is something that happens at night. If somebody wants to prevent you from taking a night, a night uh, action, they would need to occupy you. So the king being immune to occupation means he can, get his, he can use his night abilities without worrying about being uh, uh, controlled. The second thing here is the loyalty. Now this is ability that affects the daytime. Uh, you don't want to ever get voted to be executed because you don't, obviously you don't want to die. And so because of his loyalty, he cannot be voted up for treason until at least three days have passed. Okay, so those are the, the passives. Let's go to the day abilities. Uh, I have an ability called the Royal Finger, which is your next nomination for treason will count twice, which is a very, very powerful ability. Uh, I also have a Decide Fate ability, which basically lets me pardon anyone I want to uh, one time for that day. Uh, so notice that there's, there's a difference between the Infinity symbol, which means I can use it an unlimited amount of times, and the One symbol, which means I've only got one use of it. Uh, finally, let's go to the Night ability. So because it's nighttime, that's the one I want to pay attention to right now. I've got an ability called Guard, so let's let me protect somebody, and Allies, which lets me figure out who my allies are or not. Um, and another thing that's interesting here is the king is one of the uh, only roles that's gu uh, it's guaranteed in the game and can be one of the three factions. It can either be a blue dragon, which is the good guys, it can be an unseen or cult, which is the bad guys, or it can be neutral, which means he just wants to live. That's it. So now that we've gone through the class card, uh, pay attention to the top right corner where there's a drop down. If you click on it, you can go investigate any other role that interests you. So on night one, you're gonna wanna check out your abilities and see if there's any abilities you wanna use for the first night. If you wanna do it, you click the button and you click the number of the player that you want that ability to affect. And you'll notice a confirmation on the left-hand side in the log. On top of this, you are gonna to wanna to put some notes in for yourself so you know what actions you took when. So it's very, very important to fill out the log. 
So hopefully you survive through the night. In this game, everyone survived through the night. Um, but you'll notice here on the left-hand side of the screen, I got a notice in orange that the member of uh, the member I checked, number 12, is a member of the Blue Dragon. This is important information for me. So you'll notice what I do is I do a whisper to number 12. Now, you'll notice that when I'm referring to different players at the table, it's a lot easier to refer to them to their numbers instead of their names. Names can sometimes get confusing and you kind of forget what's happening, but the numbers uh, are, are static and they're always assigned. So you don't have to worry about the numbers switching or doing anything like that. Um, but uh, what's important on the right hand side is the name list. If you right click on a name, that is how you whisper to players. However, you left click on a name, you are accusing them of treason. So be careful what you do, and you'll notice right here that uh, that Timmy has accused two of treason, and then rescinded the accusation, and that's probably because they did they did a misclick, because uh, that happens all the time. Uh, people get confused and they think left clicking will uh, will do a message when it's supposed to be a right click. So if if there is an accusation against a player, you'll notice that there's a little number next to the player, signifying how many people are voting for him to be executed. Or uh, putting them up for treason would be a way to say it. You're not immediately executed. Uh, you have to go up to a vote. So honestly, there isn't too much more else to go into without going into tons and tons of detail. Uh, it is very important to keep up with your logs so that people can tell what you did. And if somebody asks for your logs, you can have information to provide them. Uh, but beyond that, it, the game is going to come down to experience. So the more games you play, the more you're going to understand your role and how to play that role. And honestly, we can go into videos about those roles and that would be for another time. But this should give you enough to get you started. And hopefully you can enjoy the game just as much as everyone else is right now. So thanks for uh, taking the time to listen to this. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I will do my best to help out. See you guys next time. Bye.